Thanks for clicking. The Canadian Real Estate Association just released its monthly report on Canada's housing market for the month of June, showing continual declines in sales and pricing, with sales down across the country and the Bank of Canada's interest rate hike set to perpetuate that downward trend. It looks like we're seeing the end of Canada's real estate bubble. Never thought I'd see this day. Indeed, the report shows a major decline in sales activity, especially compared to this point in time last year, as well as a continued reduction in the price of Canadian real estate. But the report also wades into Canada's regulatory environment, looking at ways that policymakers could change the stress test and decrease the burden on holders of fixed rate mortgages. Are you crazy? What? So what I want to do today is go over the report and the monthly sales data, take a look at its suggestions for changing housing policy in Canada, and then take a look at what to look for next. Speaking of next, we will have an update out on Canada's monetary policy report and its predictions for the Canadian real estate market going forward. If you want to get that update, make sure you click like and subscribe. But for now, let's get into this report. The report just released by the CREA quantifies what we've been seeing all across the market. Slowing sales, with sales down 5.6% on a month-over-month -month basis. Compared to this point in time last year, last June, sales are down 23.9% from the record set in June last year. Prices were also down, with the average price of a home in Canada down to $665,850 down 1.8% from last year, and the benchmark price was also down almost $30,000 from this point in time last month. So sales are down over 5%, the benchmark price is down $30,000 since last month, and we're seeing a major reduction in the average price of a home in Canada. So what is to be done about these price declines? You'll do nothing! That's not the way CREA sees it. We've noted before on this channel about the increasing tendency of Canadian home buyers to go with variable rates. And an economist from CREA, Sean Cathcart, says that the reason for this is because of mortgage qualification standards and the stress test. Under the rules of the stress test, Canadian home buyers have to qualify at either two points above the contract rate, that is the rate that they're paying, or 5.25%, whichever is higher. So in June, when Prime was still 3.7, and a decent variable rate was Prime minus 1, buyers were getting a contract rate of 2.7, so they were qualifying at 5.25%. On the flip side, a decent 5-year fixed insured rate at that time was 499 so buyers were having to qualify at 6.99%, which can definitely have a big impact on buying power. Take Toronto's median household income of $85,000. I know you're not buying anything in Toronto for 85k household income, but just as an example. Those buyers qualifying for a home in June with an $85,000 income and using minimum down payment requirements and a 6.99 interest rate qualified for roughly a purchase price of $340,000. Now, if we use that same 85k income and we use a 5.25 interest rate and minimum down payment requirements, those same buyers using that variable rate would have qualified for a purchase price of $390,000. So a $50,000 increase in buying power just for using a variable rate mortgage. As such, Cathcart says that a strict stress test made sense when rates were at record low. But policymakers may want to assess if it continues to meet its policy objectives now that fixed rate mortgage rates are back at more normal levels. So the argument is that home buyers are losing buying power with the rising interest rates, and as such, the government should rethink its stress test to see if it still makes sense to have them qualify at two points above their contract rate. But it's not clear that that's the case. The stress test was put in place in large part to provide a cushion for home buyers should interest rates rise. But as far as I can tell, we are still in a rising interest rate environment. You must have been at the top of your f***ing class. The Bank of Canada just raised rates by 100 basis points, and judging from most accounts, it looks like they're going to raise interest rates by another 100 basis points by the end of 2022 bringing the policy rate to 3.5%. So not only are we still in a period of rising interest rates, it's not clear to me that that's going to be changing anytime soon. The bank is going to be raising rates for the foreseeable future and the inflation rate is showing no signs of slowing down either. Granted, we might get some relief in the CPI, 
by the end of the year if energy prices keep slowing down. As we've talked before on this channel, wage demands are starting to increase and are putting real pressure on our CPI and are likely to for the foreseeable future as well. So it's not clear that the Bank of Canada continues to raise interest rates until the end of 2022 and stops. And even if they do stop, it's not clear that they reverse. Today's interest rates, by historical standards, especially compared to our inflation rate, are still massively low. They're still low by historical standards, and they're still low in that they are technically negative interest rates, in that they're lower than the rate of inflation. So it's not clear that 3.5% is the highest this policy rate can go. In fact, ask anyone that, taught, that was alive and had a home in the 1980s, they'll tell you they can go an awful lot higher. Let me tell you a couple of three things. Granted, this is not the 80s, but that doesn't mean that 3.5% is the interest rate ceiling. It definitely could go higher, and I think it's a little too early to be suggesting that we remove some of the safeguards that many have said are helping to save Canada from financial crisis right now as buyers were stress tested for higher interest rates for the past few years. With that said, we will continue to have updates out on the Bank of Canada's interest rate policy as this goes forward, and especially on its effect on our real estate prices. If you want to get those updates, make sure you click like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching.